Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're just going to review some of the changes that we would have made since the last time when we were creating our ad edit form for our cars. Now I'm going to start off with the manage vehicle listing window where you realize that I added what I labeled as a refresh button. So this refresh button will just refresh the grid each time a change is made. So let us take it for a spin. Firstly, let's start with the add new car. So when adding a new car, I added validation to the form to make sure that at least a make and a model are present. So when I click save changes, then I'm going to get this. Please ensure that you provide a make and a model. So if I'm going to add a new one and let's say I had a Suzuki and a Swift, and then I click save changes. I also put in a try catch because then year is expecting a value so it can parse into integer, right? So when I click save changes, then my, my arrow comes up from my exception, right? So then if I provide a change, uh, a year, sorry, and I say 2013, and well, those are the only three fields that are well absolutely necessary for it to work and click save changes. I put in another message box that said insert operation completed, refresh grid to see changes, right? So we did discuss that we wanted to manage the user's experience between adding or modifying data in the car and getting back to the grid. So after displaying this message box and I click okay, the window will close, but then I can click refresh and then it will display the new field, right? And then if I try to edit without selecting, so even though you may see it highlighted blue, it's not really selected. So if I click edit car, I get a nasty arrow, but then once again, this is just a try catch. Catching that arrow that would have been an exception showing me that you know the index was out of range. It's basically saying that I didn't select anything from the grid um, control, right? But then my program does not stop executing. So I can always rectify that by just clicking and let's start with the record that we just added. When I click Suzuki Swift, click edit car, then it brings up edit vehicle. So I made sure to modify the title that comes up. So let me go back to add car. The, when I click add new car, it's the same form, but one, the label changes and two, the title in the window changes. So to any typical user, it could have been two different windows. That's not really our business to worry about. So I'm just changing it so the user feels like it's the same window at all times. Well, it is the same window, but they feel like it's a different window, sorry. At, and then what happens is that the functionality is slightly different also. So we're getting the load, the data preloaded. I can change the VIN and the license plate number. All right, just put in some random number, click save changes, and then it says update operation completed. So it's a similar message. I click OK, similar behavior, and then I refresh, and then I get the brand new data. Now, deleting is kind of tricky because you can't delete related data. Meaning if I select, say, Subaru, which I do believe I have a rental record to represent Subaru already, if I click delete, then I'm going to get some error saying that, you know, I have to see the inner exception for details. When I checked out that error, it was really because I have a rental record on Subaru. So I would have to delete all rental records for the Subaru in order to delete the Subaru. And that's just referential integrity coming over from the database. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. So if you get that error, that's really what's happening. But I just created Suzuki Swift. So I'm going to delete it because I know I have no, um, no records associated with it. So when I click delete, it will Oh, well, it's actually giving me an error. I did not expect that. So let us see exactly what that error is because I really didn't expect that one. So I'm going to go over to my code while still in debug mode, go to my click event, and then I'm just going to select at the point where it's supposed to actually remove the car. And then we're going to do, try that operation again. So I click, it jumps to that break point where it retrieved the car successfully. So it knows that it's getting the Suzuki Swift. All right, and then I can use F11 to step through. So it goes to save changes, at which point it throws the exception. And then if I look in the exception object, it says look inside of the inner exception for more details, right? See inner exception for more details. So I can look at that. And then it's saying that I have 
a constraint that conflicts with my database. So I'll definitely have to check that out to see if there's any rental record with that um, property, with that car, sorry, with that record in the database. So there is no related record I just checked, um, but what is happening is that it is enforcing some design constraints. So in the design of my uh, car rental record, or well, in the design of this table for types of cars on the ID or on the relationship, actually, um, there would be this insert and update deletion and update rule, right? So basically I can set no action or cascade. So I would have had to set cascade for it to just say, okay, I will delete. The danger to this, however, is that if it deletes the record, then it will delete all associated or all related records. So if it deletes car with ID one, then every rental record that is associated with car with ID one would also get deleted, which you may not necessarily want. So you would have to gauge that experience with your application. However, we do see that, you know, we, we can probably go by the delete for now and we fix it at a later date. But I just wanted to get across the fact that we could, you know, modify our application to do some CRUD against the vehicle listing. Um, we could create a single form that has multiple purposes and we can write some cool code in our code file to handle the experience that our users have. So after finishing up our managed vehicle listing, we'll probably want to turn our attention to finishing up the rental record where we create a view similar to this, where we can view all of the rental records coming in from the database and be able to modify them when needed.